Sure. And uh, one last question. Some of that footage will show these guys, right? What? Some no, no, that is, you are all behind there until you come forward. If you wish to participate, which you will. <laughs> yes, big one. <clears throat> James Madison, fourth president of the United States. You may be curious why after 180 years of quiet repose in the grave, I have decided to return. And the reason is that I am concerned about the democracy of my country. I have seen too many things happening that, that we fought against in 1776. I thought that perhaps if I came back and talked about the issues that we faced then, that you would have the insight to make better decisions today. I am 43 years old. I am well respected as congressman, beloved, I would say, and lonely. There is no one in my life to fill that special place until Dolly Payne Todd was an exciting, vivacious, intelligent, very, very social, outgoing young widow. Her husband had just died in the plague in Philadelphia the previous year. One out of every ten people in Philadelphia died over a period of three months. Think about that. One out of every ten people died from the plague over a three months period. Horrendous. <clears throat> now, I need a dolly. Who would like to read dolly? Yes, we have a dolly. Come yeah. forward, Ms. Ms. Harm. <laughs> but I'm dolly. Yes. So. <clears throat> and I'm DM. And would you choose someone to be your best friend, Elizabeth Collins? She will have a very short part. Elizabeth Collins? Yes. Who would make a good Elizabeth Collins? We have come to the end of our time. Oh, oh, I think she's already been nominated. Right here, Elizabeth Collins. Elizabeth oh. Collins. Ah, oh. uh, come forward, come forward. Uh, okay. May, 1794. Dear friend, thou must come to me. Aaron Burr says that the great little Madison has asked to be brought to see me this evening. This is most wonderful news, my friend. He is the lion of the House of Representatives. He practically wrote the Constitution. He is quite wealthy and a very gentle individual. He, also, he is also a strong and, and, uh, and bought abolitionist. But he still holds a hundred slaves. I'm a quick. We oppose slavery most, Adam. How can you oppose that which provides for you? When manumission. Okay. Okay. When manumission became legal in Virginia, your father freed all his slaves. However, when he came to Philadelphia, he was unable <clears throat> to make a living and ended up in Deborah's debtors. De debtors. 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 Prison. So I did the most reasonable thing. I asked him to introduce. Oh, Oops. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Then it goes to DM. Right. Right, well, uh, page 22. I have this. 22. Yeah. You oh, don't have 22, 22. sweetie Do you have 22 before that? No. Just I was on the back of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Just a trick. That's okay. Uh, no, no. Come, come, come. I want to see you. That's the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're friends. And written out of the Quaker Friends meeting. It was terrible and horridly unfair. Father was such a good man. You recall my nanny, Mother Amy? Yes, of course. A wonderful woman. She was my confidant. I could tell her anything. Father hired her to accompany us north and continue to help the family. He paid her every penny that was due her. 
even while she was going bankrupt and headed to jail, he still paid her. And she didn't spend it. When she died, she left almost $500 to my mother. Well, we are not here to solve all the world's problems. We are here to meet the great little Madison. The great little Madison. That's what they call me. Philadelphia was a huge city, 40,000 people, the largest city in the United States. Everyone knew who Dolly was and how her husband, a lawyer, died last year during the yellow fever. She was clearly a woman of exceeding capacity along with great beauty. Whew. 26, alone with a baby, and yet she managed to run a respectable boarding house. She was lovely. Men would stop on the streets just so they could watch her pass by. I wanted to know if she was a woman for me. I knew that other men were eager to pay her suit as soon as she had, as soon as enough time had passed since her husband's demise. I determined not to delay. I asked my friend Aaron Burr, who knew her family, and he owed me a favor. And I was also afraid that Aaron Burr had eyes for their young widow. So I did the most reasonable thing. I asked him to introduce me to her, thus taking him out of the picture. He could not compete because now it is his honor he introduced me. <laughs> uh, Aaron, let us, uh, may I have an Aaron of Aaron Burr? James? Would you come forward and read Devante, Aaron Burr? Whoever? Ah, Devante! Here we go. Aaron Burr. Amy. Amy. Cool. Is it my dear? Yes. My dear Dolly, I should like to introduce you to my good friend, Mr. James Madison. And her good friend? Oh, I'm so sorry. And her good friend, Miss Elizabeth Collins. Uh, let us sit and have a pleasant chat. It is quite the honor to have your visitation. And on such a lovely spring day like this, I could hear the morning larks singing their songs quite early. I don't know if you gentlemen have had that opportunity, what with the affairs of the state and all. It is quite difficult to balance the good of the country and one's personal life. I feel blessed that I have had the means to do the work of the state and listen to the lark on occasion. Other times you are forced to listen to that squawking blue jay of a man, Alexander Hamilton. I fear his banking schemes give too much power to those who already have too much. I should not be so harsh in my characterization of Colonel Hamilton, but in essence you are correct. Our country needs enough centralized power to conduct foreign affairs, but the states should be responsible for the rest. I see you are well versed in the issues of the day. Thank you. How should I be otherwise? This is the dawning of a new and better era in human existence. My. But the time has passed so quickly. Ladies, we must take in our adieu. Oh. Thank you, thank you. Did you notice? Oh, that's me. Oh, you're Tia. Never mind. Did you notice how cognizant she was of our affairs and culture? To know the meaning of the lark shows great insight. I know she runs her boarding house well. She's well accomplished. I cannot imagine a better partner. The great little Madison. And he was great. He has accomplished so much and yet remains so human. He talks to me because he's interested in what I have to say, not because I'm pretty. Though I am pretty. I know that. I enjoy being pretty and admired and sought after. My late husband was such a good, pious man but dull. These past six months on my own have been exhilarating. I don't want to lose that so soon. 
and he's so much older and sickly. I know too many young women who have married older men and found themselves as nursemaids to be to an invalid. What am I to do? Okay, uh, one line? Dolly, I have a note for you from Martin, Martha Washington. Here's your note. Thank you. <laughs> the president's wife wants to see me? Whatever for? Okay, you're Martha Washington. Feel that right there. Oh, uh, Martha voice. <laughs> uh, Dolly, it's such a pleasure to see you. Tell me of our relative in Richmond. People are quite well. Many send you their regards. Uh, Dolly, is it true that you're engaged to James Madison? <laughs> no, no, no. I think not. Oh, if it's so, don't, don't be ashamed to confess it. Better to be proud. You will make be a good, you will make be a good, a good husband. And all the, and all the better for being so much older. We will approve it. I have barely spoken to the man, and the whole city is already planning the nuptials. Have I no say in the matter? I think I best visit family in Virginia and think really hard about. While Dolly spent two months in the South, I spent the time dealing with Congress and the Whiskey Rebellion. I had no doubts that Dolly was the woman for me. <laughs> two months later, she wrote to accept me. I replied with alacrity, If the sentiments of my heart can guarantee those of yours, they assure me that there can never be a cause for doubt. The question for was, would I have to go back to being a quiet, Quaker wife in a bonnet and dark skirts? Or would I be able to live a life of excitement and society? I am a man of quiet intellect. I'm not good working with people in large groups and prefer to talk to people individually. But Dolly was my antipodal node. For I was weak, she was strong. When we had larger groups of people to dinner, Dolly would sit at the head of the table Edward Coles, my personal secretary, would sit at the foot, and I would sit in the middle. This way, Dolly could launch the conversation and keep it lively, while I could converse more quietly with those around me. So, not only did I get to share some of my husband's political load, I got to attire myself as I wished. Listen to what Mrs. Smith had to say about me at the inauguration ball. She looked like a queen. She had a pale, buff-colored velvet made plain with a very long train, but not the least trimming, and a beautiful pearl necklace, earrings, and bracelets. Her headdress was a turban of the same colored velvet and white satin from Paris. With two superb plumes, the bird of paradise feathers, it would absolutely be impossible for anyone to behave with more perfect propriety than she did. <laughs> 